Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Courtney Potter. I am an editor and writer with D23, the official Disney fan club, and I am so thrilled to welcome everyone to the Disney on Ice 40th Anniversary Roundtable. Everything that you do in life starts with one small step. The first show premiered in 1981 and it's been history making. We're still bringing happiness to generations of families. When we started it, we never knew that it would ever last this long. Disney on Ice is ever-changing, and there's always surprises for all of our Disney fans. And that's the key, and as long as we can do that, Disney on Ice will be around. The creative partnership between Feld Entertainment and the Walt Disney Company, which began in 1981, was an immediate smash hit, both creatively and commercially. Under his visionary stewardship, Kenneth Feld first approached Disney about launching a new genre of live family entertainment featuring beloved characters on ice. Disney was famously particular about how its characters were portrayed, but due to Kenneth's leadership, creativity, and imaginative approach to live entertainment, he created a spectacle that had never before been seen. Disney was so impressed with how Feld Entertainment allowed them to reach families in their own hometown that the relationship quickly grew into a multi-year relationship that would ultimately make Kenneth and his company a global phenomenon. Please welcome Chairman and CEO of Feld Entertainment and creator of Disney on Ice, Kenneth Feld. Thank you, Courtney. It's great to be here on such an incredible anniversary. 40 years of Disney on Ice seems, sort of say, seems like it was yesterday. I bet. Um, so let's go back to the very beginning. Uh, how did Disney on Ice all start? Well, it actually started, we, we had Ice Follies and Holiday on Ice, which were traditional touring ice shows. and. One, day, one Saturday afternoon, I was at one of the shows and I realized, I looked around the audience and it was an older audience. There, there weren't a lot of families there. And I knew in order to succeed in the long term, we needed to bring families in. And that was the motivation for me to go to Disney. And I wanted to really put together in one of our shows, a 20 minute segment with the Disney characters and stories. and. Um, that, that would be it and it'd be a great marketing tool for us. And I, was, I met with a gentleman who was with Consumer Products and Publishing for Disney at the time, Vince Jeffords. And he said, well, Disney has to be its own thing. We, we don't wanna be part of something else. So I said, okay, what if we take one of our tours and we convert it to all Disney stories and characters and we'll call it Walt Disney's World on Ice. And that was the genesis of what has been around now for four decades. And it's um, been amazing and it's been challenging. In the beginning, uh, we didn't know a lot about the Disney culture and we, we had to get educated and educated quickly. Right, I bet. Um, now, how did you come up with that first show concept? What was important to you about it? There were a couple important things because now we take it for granted because it's it's so many years later, but at the time it was a risk and we wanted to have as many Disney characters in one show as possible. That the only place you could see more Disney characters would be if you had gone to Disneyland or Disney World. And so we had, I want to say, over 60 Disney characters. And the story was a simple story, but it worked and it was uh, 
Pinocchio and Geppetto um, looking for each other and they went all over the world and as they traveled to different parts of the world if, when they were in South America they encountered the three caballeros and Zorro at the time and so it made it um, a very eclectic show but it delivered on a lot of uh, things with the Disney uh, characters but one thing that was very important for us is we just didn't we didn't want this to be just a kids show so the integrity of the ice skating was very important and that was then we have world-class ice skaters uh, people that have participated in won uh, Olympic medals and so this was a true family show and then over time we had the credibility of the skating we had to teach these athletes to become actors and then what we could do is we learn more every year and the shows evolved into what they've become today. Right. Um, we've chatted before and there's a really great story about that very first show and some special people that were there with you at that first performance. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, it was amazing. We opened in July 14th at the Brendan Byrne Arena, which was a brand new arena in New Jersey. And in attendance was Ron Miller, who was the um, CEO of the Disney company at the time, and Diane Disney, who was his wife. And she was there, and I sat with her on that opening night, and I turned around at the end of the show, and we had literally every character on the ice, and I could see her emotion, and I could see the tears coming down. And she turned to me and she said, my father would have loved this. And that, that was a moment for us, and it, it really spoke volumes, and it was something that really pushed us to continue to make sure we always had the quality and the Disney ethos in every single show and everything that we did. That's great, I love that story. Um, I believe we have a really great little video to show everyone. Now, Kenneth, I know it was a big deal to take Disney on Ice International for the very first time. Um, tell me about the expansion of Disney on Ice, how that came about, and what it meant to audiences around the world. It, it was really something special and something for us. I mean, in um, 1985, uh, Michael Eisner, uh, we had just negotiated a new arrangement, and it was a five-year arrangement. And what he wanted was, he wanted to make sure that we took Disney on ice, not just in North America, but globally. And that became uh, one of the contract terms, but it also enhanced and changed our company forever. And our first international uh, tour was in Japan, and it opened in 1986. And it was Donald Duck's, it had been his 40th birthday, it was now his birthday celebration. He was a, few years older then and um, it was extraordinary uh, the response that it got and then we went from there we went through other parts of Asia all through Europe and then Australia Latin America and to this day we've played in over 70 countries and we always thought of Disney on Ice as an ambassador of Disney throughout the world and we play in so many places where there is no live presence that Disney has. So we are it and it has been extraordinary. And the one thing I will say, wherever we go, the emotions, the children are the same. Some like different characters when we're in the Scandinavian countries, it's Donald Duck for sure. And, uh, but what happens is you see this joy that is universal that Disney brings to everyone around the world. I bet, yeah, exactly. Um, I think we have another great clip that's from that first international tour.
Well, you know, Disney on Ice is unique, obviously, as we're seeing from these clips, um, in that it brings Disney characters and stories to life in hometowns all around the globe, not just here in the States. Um, what was the pressure like to meet fans' expectations of all those Disney films? It, the pressure was always great. And what we learned early on, and it, it was interesting, is we, could, we didn't want to do the films on ice. We couldn't. We couldn't accomplish a lot of what animation could. So we had to adapt these great films, these great stories that everybody knew. And what was very important to us was music because we couldn't do a close up and you could see the tear coming down the cheek. We had to do it through the music, through these great songs. And that's how the emotion came out and I think it was touched everyone and then it worked also very well with the choreography and skating and you had this flow you had this speed and you had a pace and a tempo and uh, what's wonderful is everybody knew the story so we could shortcut a few of them and we didn't have to have every single detail and people will put it together in their minds and they would get the gist of the whole story and they would get the high emotional points and they were excited and they got this delivery in real time and in real life so that they would experience the emotions of being live and there's nothing that can compete with that. Obviously. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about um, the Aladdin show that Disney on Ice did. In, in 19, uh, I think it was 92, we did the first full length uh, Beauty and the Beast on Ice. <clears throat> and then Aladdin came out. So the following year, we did Aladdin. And we went and we would always make a presentation to Disney and work with them. And the big issue was well, you can never do the genie. And in, in the animation, they had the genie doing all these incredible things. And we said, well, we can figure that out. So we actually produced the first genie costume. And we got a wonderful uh, person to portray Aladdin <clears throat> inside the costume. And we were able to do even a backflip in this genie costume and that was i think when we did a video of that in advance of the show and all the disney folks and the creative people there saw it and they said wow this really expresses all the moves that we had in in the animated version that's okay go forward and that was really the big key because the genie was such a huge part of aladdin Exactly, and we actually have a video clip to um, illustrate about the genie in the show. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Um, I would also uh, love to hear about um, working with characters from the Pixar films. So like Toy Story and Cars, what were the challenges um, that you guys faced with that? The first um, full length Pixar uh, show that we did on ice was Toy Story. And the challenge there was the scale. And I think it was interesting because all the set pieces were oversized, so Woody and Buzz and all the characters appeared as they would as toys. And so there was a human in the first scene and then you didn't see a, a, a person for the entire film, the entire um, ice show. It was just the Toy Story characters and you the audience totally bought into that these were toys that actually came to life. And uh, I remember sitting with uh, <clears throat> uh, John Lasseter in Oakland, California, watching the show. 
and he couldn't believe it. He said, I used to sneak into theaters and matinees to see the response, but he said, I've never seen a response like this for my characters, and it's because you're there live and you feel a part of it. And I think that's, I know that's what I've always loved about live entertainment, and I think it's what they get to see something that they can't experience um, outside of the live. And I think, you know, in the past year that we've been in the COVID, I think live entertainment now means more to people than ever before. Absolutely. Uh, we have a little clip of the Toy Story show, in fact. Uh, now, what about cars? I know that must have presented a really unique kind of challenge to do something like that on ice. It was a big challenge and it was our scenic shop, I think enjoyed that, building that more than anything else. But we actually built the cars and they were animated. And uh, John Lasseter sent a letter around Disney. If you're ever going to do cars in any live uh, aspect, that you should follow what Feld Entertainment did with Disney on Ice. And um, I think there might be a clip of that, but it, it was pretty extraordinary. And I'm still always amazed at him. People just love it. Well, uh, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. We have a clip of that one too. Yeah. Those are amazing. They're very cool. Um, now, you also did a little thing called High School Musical, too, right? How did that all come about? Well, High School Musical in 2000, I want to say six, was the biggest phenomenon. And uh, the, then there was High School Musical, too. And it was taking not just the country, but the world by storm. So what we did is we put together three high school musicals on ice, uh, one for the United States, one for Latin America, and one for Europe. Uh, and we rehearsed them all together in Florida, and then we dispersed them around the world. And it, it was great, and it was wonderful working with Kenny Ortega because I had actually known him years before when uh, I produced the Siegfried and Roy show and he came in and he redid a bunch of scenes for us. So it was a pleasure working with him and it was a phenomenon and people, the kids just loved it. And I know, I know that um, you also mm -hmm. did a Frozen on Ice show. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yes, we have, we have this wonderful relationship with the Disney company and they share with us uh, many years before these films come to fruition and we had seen sketches and thoughts about Frozen for maybe three or four years and we couldn't wait for that to happen because what would be more logical than Disney on Ice with a show that was about ice and a film and so when that came out in uh, 2013 in November uh, we were very prepared and I don't think any of us really realized the size of the blockbuster that the film would be. But in uh, September of 2014, we came out with the first full-length Frozen show, and it was a phenomenon. And we had gone on sale uh, in May before we ever had a show. So you think about it, and we're doing a show, we're going on sale before the show ever exists. So we have to have a lot of faith in uh, not only the business it's going to do, that we can deliver on what the expectations were. And deliver it did, and I think it was probably more people saw Frozen 
uh, in the first two years in the United States and then globally than any other Disney, individual Disney on Ice show that we had produced before that. That's amazing. Um, what is so impressive to me <clears throat> is the progression of the shows throughout the 40 years. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you have done to keep the shows current and people coming back for generations? Every year, the goal is to do something different than what we've done the prior year. And I will say, uh, working with the Disney team has been extraordinary and we're always press, pressing what is new in technology, what can we do? So we brought, we have all these other shows that we produce, whether it was Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, or we have motorsport shows, and we can incorporate all of these things into Disney on Ice in different ways. So we started to involve aerial acts, uh, ice skaters that do aerial acts, or if you think of um, aerial, and she goes underwater, but how does she go underwater? She's, she's on a rope that goes down and she's doing different acrobatics on that in between the skating. So it adds a, a level of um, unexpectedness and it takes people to a different place and I think it further defines the unique aspects of Disney on Ice. And so if you come back every year, you're gonna see something different and something that's gonna to totally amaze you. Well, and speaking of amazing, we have a clip of some of those aerial uh, arts that you were talking about. Well, I think now is a great time to introduce a very special guest. Uh, she is a two-time world champion, four-time U.S. champion, an Olympic medalist, and was a featured skater for the first 10 years of Walt Disney's World on Ice, Linda Fratiani. Hi, Linda. Hi, nice to be here. Nice to see you, Linda. Thanks for coming back after all these years. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Congratulations, Kenneth, on 40 years of Disney on Ice. It has been the most spectacular show of all time, and it was such an honor for me to be a part of it. Well, thanks. You really were at the beginning, and you were the um, very credible, credible performer that not only brought kids, but adults and everybody wanting to see you and see Disney on Ice at that time. Thank you so much. Uh, Linda, um, I would love to know, how did you meet Kenneth? Well, it was a moment I will never forget. Um, I met Kenneth in Lake Placid just after receiving my Olympic silver medal. Uh, and um, what was it like? You know, um, I, I think you told a story when we first met yesterday about um, that you got off the ice and you met the, um, them and you weren't exactly sure who you were meeting right at that moment. Yeah. Well, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yes, I wasn't absolutely sure, but later on I was told who <laughs> these amazing two men. I actually met his late father, Erwin Feld, and um, yes, and then I realized who they were. And um, yes, and then I ended up working uh, 10 years for, for Kenneth and what an amazing experience that was. Now, I know you also have an interesting connection uh, that um, another member of your family had actually met Kenneth before you did. Yes, my grandfather was the vice president at the Stardust Hotel in Las Vegas, and Kenneth had a show, Siegfried and Roy, there for many years. So that was the connection, and that's how they met. <laughs> you were destined, destined yeah. to work yeah. together. Um, <laughs> so you were in that first show of Disney on Ice. Um, who did you skate as and what was that all like, especially coming from more of a sport background? Yes, I was uh, the Blue Fairy and the Jungle Princess. And um, 
it was very different. You know, we skated nine to 12 shows in six days and traveled on the seventh day. I absolutely love being in the ice show, um, putting on fishnets and these beautiful costumes every night and being in the spotlight. Um, I did train a little bit after the shows to keep in shape and it was a lot of hard work, but it was, probably the best years of my life being in Disney on Ice. I absolutely loved it. And um, it was a real honor for me to be there. And I hear you have a couple of uh, mementos that you kept from some of those early shows. Um, oh, programs. I have programs. <laughs> I have all the programs. Um, yes, and I have a lot of souvenirs. Um, Yes, and pictures all over my house and and um, <laughs> paras and eyelashes and fishnets I still have and um, earrings and yes, um, it, it was a very big part of my life that I was um, really loved being in the show. That's awesome. Um, I also heard that you were a big Disney fan in the general sense. So what was it like going from the Olympics to then skating alongside of Mickey Mouse in Disney on Ice? Yes, I grew up in California and every year my family and I would go to Disneyland and it was so exciting for us. I'm one of five. And um, so when I was asked if I wanted to join the Disney on Ice show, I was like, are you kidding me? This has been a dream. And um, so when I skated with Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and all the Disney characters, it was really a dream come true. And to be on the ice with them and interact and sing and dance and and um, it, it was, um, you know, it was, it was the dream job for me. And I couldn't believe I was even getting paid for this. It was something that I absolutely, absolutely loved doing every night. That sounds great. Uh, well, thank you so much for chatting with us today, Linda. And, and Kenneth, it must be so great to see her again with how much history you two have together. It is, and thanks so much for coming for this momentous uh, occasion, which is it's just extraordinary. It's hard to believe 40 years, but thank you so much, Linda, thank and thank you for my, your contribution for all these years. My pleasure. Well, uh, now we would like to open the proverbial floor uh, um, to everyone out there watching our celebration. So if you haven't already, please use that chat feature I mentioned before to send through your questions uh, for Kenneth and for Linda. Uh, we already actually have a few, so uh, let's go to our first one. This one is from Robert Niles. And he's asking, Disney is one of the most popular brands in the world, uh, but not everything with the Disney name on it lasts 40 years. So what has helped Disney on Ice enjoy these four decades of success? Well, thank you. I, I think the key is that we are constantly changing the shows. And what we've done in recent years is we've had more shows that are modular because the attention span is shorter, uh, and years ago, the film releases used to be staggered. So you would re they would release in the United States and then three months later, four months later in Europe. Uh, but now everything is out there all at once. So we've been very fortunate of the great product that Disney has produced. We've been able to adapt that where we have Moana in many shows, we had Frozen in, in uh, many of our units, and we now have Coco. And <clears throat> All the, all the films, and especially the films that are music driven, have the greatest strength in Disney on Ice. That's great. Um, our next question I don't have a name with, um, but thank you for sending it in. It's, um, how do you search for ice skating talent in order to continue to elevate the performances? We have a casting department and we have uh, several people that cast ice skaters and from all over the world. So. Um, I think we probably have about 15 nations represented just in, in our with our skaters, but it's always world-class skaters, but it's also something else. And one of the things, uh, and I think I said it earlier, but it's really important that the athletes, the skaters can become actors because they have to deliver uh, the roles. I mean, you see Moana, 
but Moana has to make you think and know that it is Moana and it's not just from the movement but it's from the heart and the expression and because kids come families and to them that's the Moana who stepped off the screen and they're seeing in person and they're things like that so it is important to see the skill sets beyond just the skating uh, when we hire these people and so it's it's a challenge but we look the world over and we find the best talent i bet uh this is another great question i again don't have a name but thank you as well um <laughs> what factors go into deciding which new titles are featured in a performance well, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, we're constantly doing research and the Disney company is sharing with us what the various films will do, what characters have the best recognition and the most beloved characters. And that's constantly changing and we're constantly involved, evolving. And for instance, uh, when Coco came out, uh, we, we said, we. It was so popular in Latin America, Mexico especially, that even though it was maybe five months before, we were able to create a Coco segment that went into that show that was hugely popular and brought a lot more people uh, to the show. And so it's really a, an understanding, and we worked very closely with Disney to say, not only what is the most popular characters, but what will we relate to the shows? How can we integrate them into the shows where it's seamless and there seems to be a level of logic to do that? And we've been successful in doing that. And look, this is what we do 365 days a year. And we have continually eight to nine tours traveling the globe. That's amazing. Uh, and speaking of the globe, uh, when you tour the shows internationally, do you have to make any changes? Well, it's interesting. When we tour internationally, uh, first of all, uh, the soundtracks, they, it is dubbed in the local language always, which is important. And the other thing is there are nuances uh, <clears throat> in certain cultures. Uh, it's, it's quite different if we, when we used to play Brunei, uh, and they would, the preceding uh, country, I think, was Japan, and they, they would send people there to look at the show, and they would say, can you modify this costume or do this? And uh, we always do that because we want to be very sensitive to all cultures, and that's what Disney has done throughout the years, and it's important. And then we're accepted, and once people come to Disney on Ice show, they want to come back. And the key to everything is having uh, guests that come back year after year, generation after generation. And it's, it's really gratifying to see that. I bet. Um, this is a great question. And I know, Kenneth, you and I had chatted about this also a little bit when last we spoke. Mm -hmm. um, what does Disney mean to your family? Dis Disney, it, it means a, a lot to our family because it's a huge part of our company and how we think every day. But I think the most important thing is we are really entrusted with the most valuable intellectual property in the world, and that's all the Disney properties. And we treat it as if we own it. We obviously don't own it. But the integrity uh, of the Disney characters, of the Disney properties, is first and foremost. And we respect that. and. We want to take care of it because that is the most valuable, uh, really, possession of the Disney company as well as all the IP that they've created o over the years. And we want to make sure that we can maintain that quality. And that's what we've done. Absolutely. Uh, and this last question uh, I want to know as well, and that's what's next for Disney on Ice? Well, people always ask me, what's your favorite Disney on Ice show? And I always say the next one, because we're always going to do something different, more unique, and uh, very challenging from an artistic uh, way of doing it. So I will say, I love every Disney on Ice show that we do, and my favorite one is going to be the next one that we have coming out. 
That's great. Uh, now, before we leave, we have one last very special surprise. Uh, we couldn't celebrate 40 years of Disney on Ice without inviting a certain icon to join us. So please put your virtual hands together for your friend and mine, the star of Disney on Ice, Mickey Mouse. Hey, Mickey, oh, it's great you. to see you. Congratulations on 40 years. And I have to tell you all something about Mickey Mouse. In 40 years, Mickey Mouse has never missed a performance. An extraordinary <laughs> record, and we're counting on another 40 years. That's amazing. Oh, thank you so much for joining us, Mickey. And thank you again, Kenneth, and to Linda for sharing so many wonderful stories with us today. And most especially, thanks to all of you out there for joining our celebration for such an incredible milestone with Disney on Ice. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you real soon. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And thank you, Mickey. It's been great.